Hi, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life, of course. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's talk about this week ahead. Before I get started, oh my God, I was debating on do I want to stick with just this video or are there levels to this that I want to dive into? There is so much going on in the charts for this week ahead. It is mind blowing. There's usually a lot going on in the, in the astrology charts, period. But when you merge intuition, when you merge cards, when you merge the chart, it just seems to kind of pack on top of itself and making all these extra layers. And that's something that I'm kind of experiencing this week as I'm pulling the charts. It just feels like there's a lot that's going on that I want to talk to you guys about. So bear with me because I'm not entirely sure where the direction of this video is going to go. I'm just going to stay open and I ask that you guys stay open, which pretty much sums up the entire energy of this week ahead as far as what it is that I'm feeling. We must stay so flexible. I mean, come on. I feel like a broken record. I was laughing at myself earlier today. Is that Google talking to me right now? What's up, girl? <laughs> No, I was legit laughing to myself earlier today while I was, I was shuffling the cards because I'm like, angels, guides, we are a broken record at this point. I mean, how many times can I say the same thing in different ways, but it's pretty much the same thing. And that's what I'm kind of experiencing with a few twists and turns because, of course, the charts, what's going on in the planets, as above, so below, is impacting us here down on Earth. And I'm going to give you the tea. I'm going to give it to you good. I'm going to give it to you as I see it. So the first thing is the fact that Venus, which rules love, beauty, relationships, aesthetic, and our values has moved into the sign of Leo. And this was last week, but it changes, it shifts. And we're going to see this for the upcoming weeks ahead. Venus has been going through it for all of us. And we're seeing this totally trickle down into our finances, into how we feel about ourselves. Oh my God, self-love. If you are confident within yourself, if you are confident in your ability to attract and to receive, it almost seems like for some of us, for a lot of us, that has been tested. It, it's almost like boundaries, our relationships, our, our boundaries that we have with others, our boundaries that we have with ourselves are being highlighted. Our money, our values are being tested. What we thought was secure seems like it's not secure. And that's why the message that is that continuously has been coming through to me is to ground, to ground, to center. And that our perception, we have to be so hyper aware of our perception because our perception shifts and changes how we see the world and how we react to the world. And if we're not grounded, if we're not centered, if we're not being intuitively guided, it's so easy to, to react. It's so easy to be triggered. And that's what I've been seeing within the last three weeks. And again, that's why I've been feeling a, a, a broken record. That we have to factor in the fact that Saturn ruling our structure, our stability has been creating ground that's not solid. Pluto has been transforming everything around us and things that we thought that we left, it seems like it's blowing up in some way, shape or form. It's like this cycle that we thought that was completed, somehow it shows up in some different way and we're like, wow, you again, this demon in my closet has jumped out and I just wasn't expecting it. I'm not here for this. I deserve better for myself. OMG. And then Jupiter retrograde is kind of like, you know, it's there's two ways that Jupiter can to, can work for you when it's retrograde. Either it brings it all and it brings it hard, it brings it good, or it's like your vision, your perception of things is kind of limited and when you used to be creative, when you could see all these potential and you could see the way out, the light at the end of the tunnel, it seems like that light kind of is dimming, dimming, dimming. And all that we're fo forced to fall on is our faith. We're forced, for some of you guys who don't have faith and you don't believe in the unknowable, the unseeable, the things that don't make sense, then you're gonna fall on your logic. And either way, both of those things are being tested. Oh, that's what we've been dealing with! <laughs> that's what we've been dealing with. And at the end of the day, my friends and I, we got together recently and we were just like, look, all we could do is laugh at it. It's all we could do. It's like the person who's who says to themselves, I'm going to go down to the river. I'm going to take a break because life has gotten to be a lot. It's really been testing me with all these changes. And some of them are good, but every stress, like good stress is still stress at the end of the day. It's like that person that goes down to the river to get away. They're sitting at the river and an alligator comes in and, you know, <laughs> pulls them under or something. Like that's the worst metaphor I know but it kind of sums up a lot of what we've all been experiencing and for those of you guys that have just been coasting 
then that's awesome and that's good and I'm really happy for you you know just keep keep up with that trend and I'm wondering what your sun sign is and what your rising sign is more importantly what your rising sign is because I would like to see what's going on or even just your chart if you guys have been coasting then that's good so yeah Venus moved into the sign of Leo on the 28th and that was yesterday I'm filming on the 29th which is a Monday but again, this kind of creates this shift, this change. Venus was in the sign of cancer, which was focusing a lot of us on, okay, what makes us feel good? What makes us feel safe and nurtured? And where do I belong? Where is my home? Home is where the heart is. And whose heart do I belong to? And who belongs to my heart? And what belongs to my heart? And what is there for me? I'm trying to create that. For some of you guys, you are really wanting to be embraced by your home environment, be embraced by family. And when you see that that is not something that you're able to receive, the disappointment, the conflict that you feel within that, and then to be called into action to protect yourself from your own family members, from your own, own friends, like that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with, especially when it's like, where do I belong in this world? Do I even belong to my own family? Do they feel like they're mine or do they feel toxic? And it could be family, it could be friends, it could be your social media com community or community regardless. You're asking yourself, do I belong here? Is this where I belong? And some of you guys are finding that you do belong there and others you kind of feel like you're getting pushed out and it makes you feel very vulnerable. It makes you feel very exposed. So, so those are some things that I really want to talk to you guys about or that I wanted to address and I wanted to validate for you and your experience. Now, this week, OMG, so this week, this, the first portion of this week, we have the sun squaring off with Uranus. And when I say you need to be flexible, I am telling you guys, we need to be flexible. Why? Well, oh, you know what came through to me was this message of, oh, she's acting out of character. Like that's what came through when I saw this aspect that's nearing like perfect completion at the start of this week is, oh, you're acting out of character. We don't recognize this side of you. Who are you? You've always been our good girl. You've always been this person. We could always expect this from you. So who do you think you are now? Okay, well, you know what? Because I've been this same version of myself again and again, it brought me to where I am here today, and that is why I'm reacting. That is why I have to create a shift. That is why there needs to be a change, because who I have been has served everyone else, or maybe it served nothing, or maybe it served me, or in some way, shape, or form, but now the universe, uh, the divine, or my path is causing call, calling me to do differently and it might make you uncomfortable it's making me uncomfortable but the way things have been cannot continue so yeah okay oh she's acting strange oh she's shifting up oh she's changing you better believe I am so that's what I'm seeing at the start of this week is for some of you guys you really are splitting it's almost like people are like oh she's rebelling for no reason no there is a series of events that have happened that have put me at where I am today and because I can no longer I can no longer do you know what I mean that's what it is that I'm seeing it's not that you're rebelling some of you guys may be rebelling but others it's this act of rebellion is not because you're not doing it out of spite you're doing it because who you are has probably not served you or you're at a space in your life where it can no longer serve you this can create a lot of anxiety a lot of change for so many of us you're feeling this it's if you haven't seen it yet it's kind of like this energy that is around you that you might see it in your your daughter your son your cousin your father your friends your your partner your husband your wife you you can feel it you can see it see it you can sense it that it almost seems as though you say the wrong thing or you say the right thing and that person explodes and i'm not giving you guys permission to explode again because Woo! yo <laughs> i caught you i don't know how that happened just now but we're back so um yeah i don't know if it's someone says the right thing or the wrong thing but someone says something and with that again it's with this change that has been building up and accumulating and now it's the time for you to be like you know what I am not doing this anymore. I'm breaking free of this. I release myself from this environment. You might have expected this from me for, for time and time again, but that is not where I'm at anymore. And I cannot be this. And you might see a splitation. You might see something shift. You might see something change. That being said, as if, again, you know, you have to look at the cycle. We have, as astrologers, as intuitives, we have to look at the cycles of life and how things work in a cycle 
in general and is going to move going to move direct in the sign of cancer and during what we're going to see during this time is us questioning and our thoughts and our thinking going back to what do i belong what do i need i need to mentally be nurtured i need my words to speak life into the things that are around me i need to support them they need to be supported i need to be supported i need to feel and know that i'm supported i need to hear it i need to see it i need proof there is a feeling that is pulling all of us from our hearts it is so obvious that is why for so many of you guys when we see the word change a rebellion it's because you're being called to do something you're being pulled your heart is pulling you the, in a way that it's like, okay, I know I have to do this in a way that is healthy for me in order to protect my heart. For so many of us, our heart has been our greatest strength and our greatest weakness at the same time simultaneously. Oh my gosh. And the, the push-pull that we feel from that. I love this person. I love this thing. But at the same time, I love myself. I have to take care of myself. So when Mercury goes direct in the sign of cancer, basically what he is doing and I say he, but it's, you, you know, the, the planets, this planet can be male or female, to be honest with you. But what he's doing is he's get, moving into a space of stillness and quiet, and he's trying to connect back to heart source, especially with the sun moving through the sign of Leo. The sun moving through the sign of Leo is the center of the universe. The center of your universe is your heart. And the same thing is true with the planets. The same thing is true with the cosmos. So basically what we're doing is we're moving back into this quiet, still space within our hearts and connecting within ourselves. And we're asking ourselves, look, you know, what do I need? What do I love? Where do I belong? Again, that cycle is bringing us right back to that same thing. That's why I've been sounding like a broken record lately, lately, but I'm not going to compromise the truth of these messages and what's actually going on in order to give fresh content and make it, oh, look, a crow just landed. I'm not gonna give fresh content and compromise the truth of what it is that I see in order to make things more exciting when you guys are seeing the same repeating energy and asking why, why, why? You're gonna keep coming back to my channel and I'm gonna keep lying to you? Absolutely not. I'm always gonna tell you guys that you know we are working with the universe's time, we're working with God's time, the divine's time, and that time is it alone, if time even exists. So we can, we can see the trends in the charts, but we cannot pr promise anything other than what it is. And as I'm saying that, the crow is signaling his you know, his words of confirmation and clarity on that. And the crow is a symbol of magic and mysticism and things that don't make sense and that can freak us out and can make us uncomfortable, but they're there for a very specific reason. And we have to trust that and to go into a space of trust is to open up into a space of vulnerability, but also being vulnerable sometimes is bliss, if that makes any sense. The other thing that I'm seeing this week that's really important, and how can I not talk about this, is the Leo new moon. And this is back to our heart center. This is explosion. I don't like using that word anymore, especially in today's times. This is an outpouring from the heart that resonates. I like the word outpouring versus explosion. But this is an outpouring from the heart, and this is a fresh oh my god please universe I'm gonna make a video on the details of the Leo new moon of course I am and I'm also making oils for that and by the time you are watching this video the pre-orders for the intentions for to reserve your bottle for the Leo new moon will be up on Bahati Life you uh, Bahati Life Apothecary so you can go ahead and check that out for those of you guys that don't know what it is that I do outside of making videos and giving you guys information as far as timing with the planets and the charts and what it is that I intuitively am seeing and feeling I um, I run an apothecary all of my items there the oils the magic the intention that I make comes directly from me from my intentions from my studies what I see going on in the stars and then bringing that down here to earth and then I look at your intentions I look at your messages and then I put merge both of those things into a bottle set magic set intention over it and then create let it sit for three days and then it's shipped out um, every new moon every full moon I do this usually pretty steady, pretty regular, regularly, unless I am called to do magic for myself or intention for myself, or I'm called to be quiet, to not share and to be still. And I always respect that. So that's something that you guys can expect from me, but that bottle will be available for reserve and I will be creating it at the time of the new moon, which is going to be the 31st. And I am going to be working my magic for myself. I was debating, do I want to work magic for myself with this new moon? 
I didn't know, now I know the answer is yes. I'm definitely gonna be doing it. I'm not entirely sure what it is that I'm gonna be calling in this time or what my magic's gonna look like for myself, but we shall see. I'm gonna stay open to that process, but for a lot of you guys, you know exactly what it is that you want, and this is going to be tied to areas of creation, your creative projects, your children, romance, dating, self-expression, confidence. So there's a lot of things that are going on around you that you know specifically it is time for you to call in. And this is gonna be that time is the Leo New Moon. It's gonna be happening for some of us on the 31st and others the first. That being said, OMG, so the very end of this week, we're having what I like to see it as is a test of our own personal independence and a test of our self-love. You are being called to stand on your own two feet and that could mean that maybe there might be a new door that opens for you, especially when it comes to the Leo New Moon, where you are being called to um, split up. Even though it's full moons can bring sign to culminations, the new moon is like, look, I need you to start fresh. I need you to start new here. Uh, or maybe be quiet, especially with Mercury, which was retrograde, is then going to be direct that quiet space, that limbo space that we have to give a week of, of um, elbow room for Mercury to do what he's going to do. And that means that we need to be quiet. We need to be kind of still. There's so much going on around us regardless that even if we're quiet and still, the universe or our environment is going to be popping off with like, oh my gosh, didn't see that coming. So-and-so broke up. Oh, that's so mind blowing. We would have never saw that. We would have never predicted that. Oh, I'm going on the spontaneous trip. That's not even something that I would have expected. Okay, somehow I got demoted in my job. Somehow I got promoted. Some my boss yelled at me. There's a lot of interesting developments that are gonna pop up this week that I want you guys to be aware of that there is this element of surprise that it, you want to be flexible with. Just this weekend, I was I had my mindset on something. I was like, okay, this is what I'm working on. This is where I'm going. This is what I'm doing. And it just felt like it was frustrating moment after frustrating moment and instead of I wanted to cry like I was so frustrated I was so frustrated because for uh, I don't even want to get into it but I was so frustrated and I actually sat down and was still for a second and I was like okay okay God okay divine I hear you you're asking me to do nothing right now fine I surrender was I rebellious in my surrender yes I was I'm not gonna pretend and pretend like I was like oh yes I surrender. There are moments where I'm totally in a space of bliss with that, but I'm being honest with you guys. This weekend, I was so frustrated where when I surrendered, I was like pouting with it. I was like, for real, for real, this is what we're doing. This is what, okay, fine. You want me to chill? I'm gonna chill. Fine, whatever. Oh my God, the caramel macchiato from Starbucks hits so good. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. It really does. There are so many coffee shops that have the most special, most amazing coffees and blends hashtag shout out to spitfire coffee here in new orleans but sometimes it's that basic girl starbucks caramel macchiato that just hits that spot in the way that only it can in the most basic simple way possible and that's what this is doing for me but yeah no this weekend i had this moment where i'm like are you serious are you serious are you serious right now and i just sat back and I was like, well, I'm gonna read my book. And then I started reading my book and I took a nap and it was amazing, but I was still frustrated. <laughs> and that's truth, that's truth. A lot of us are feeling that and I just want you guys to know that I feel that way too. Like I'm not immune to it. So there, there is this energy and there's this element of that this week that I want you guys to respect and then I want you guys to plan for, plan accordingly. Now that being said, let's go ahead and look into the cards that it is that I pulled and let's see what intuitive messages come through for me because I haven't sat with this message yet. So, okay, overall for this week, I'm seeing the Eight of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles. These are the cards that are pulled up for us. And basically what I feel and what I see is the words, okay, let's be easy on ourselves. Let's be easy. Mentally, there's a lot going on. In our environment, there's a lot going on. So instead of us forcing, fighting, pushing, questioning, doubting ourselves, and trying to do more and trying to force an outcome when the universe is popping things off left and right, and our environment is popping things left off left and right, we kind of want to ease into our comfort. We want to ease into the Queen of Pentacles energy. We want to support ourselves. Do you see? 
how she's holding on to this coin here. It's like she's like holding it and nurturing it. And she's like, what do you need, honey? What is it that you need? What is going to make you, what is going to make you thrive? What's going to make you feel good? That's what I want. That's the conversation I I want us to have with ourselves is, okay, instead of me being like, go ride that bike when you're learning how to pedal and you're still on, you know, the training wheels on your bike, it's like, okay, I get why you're scared. I get why you're nervous. I get why you're second guessing and there's self-doubt here. So let's just be easy on yourself. Something about the gentleness of this card is where we're going to call our power back to us because it's not this force and this it's not this lie to ourselves or, oh, I don't feel this way. You do feel this way. You are building a brand. You are ma building a business. There are a lot of things required from you. You This is like a person who has new love come into their life and it's everything that is that they want, but something about it still makes them feel nervous and makes them almost want to self-sabotage and self-defeat or lock up and be like, I can't do this, I'm not ready. You are ready, but just take a small step, be easy on yourself, and you will call your power back to you. And that is the biggest act of self-love is you and you. I see you as the queen of pentacles, whether you're a male or a female or whatever it is that you choose to identify as. And I also see this coin as you as well, where you're just kind of holding on to yourself and being like, what is it that you need? What is it that you need? Write it down. Have that conversation with you in the mirror. It's almost like self-love, um, self like uh, child, childlike, uh, child healing, inner child inner child healing and for some of you guys I'm seeing the need for Reiki work I don't know why that's coming through but energy healing massage therapy I need touch I need you to touch and massage my body and touch my body in a way that makes me feel comfortable and safe and hope to get some of this energy blockage kind of going because all of it is going into my brain and all of it's going into my logic my thoughts my thinking and it's making me feel like I am powerless when the reality is that I'm powerful and I don't want you guys to look at this week there's this reminder that I feel like I have to give you, which is look at how far you've come. Don't forget how far you've come because you have you see how far you have yet to go. Let's not forget that, okay? Let's not forget that. That is valuable. That is precious. That is priceless. So I'm seeing that and um, I'm seeing you connect again back to your heart and the heart is a star. The star is a sun. The sun is the center of our universe. That's how I'm seeing it. That's how I'm feeling it. Take it as it resonates. But I'm seeing how the stars guide us. We look to the stars to guide us all the time. The sun is a star and our heart is guiding us. They're the same things. We're looking for guidance. We're looking for direction. Look to the star, look to the sun, look to your heart. Where is it that you're being pulled? What is it that you see for yourself? This stream, what is this imagination? It's like when you look at yourself and when you look at what is it that you're holding, what is it that you've imagined? The greatest vision that you have for yourself, what could you possibly imagine for your life? And how does it make you feel? That is where you're going. That is where we're going. Whether you can see it now or whether you can't, that is where we're headed. Uh-oh. <laughs> First part of this week covering Monday through Wednesday, I am seeing, and I find this is problems, problemsome, 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 troublesome. <laughs> did I just did I just make a word up? I'm good at that lately. Okay, um, so the Emperor and the Six of Cups. Who is this? Who is this? <laughs> no, for real. Who is the Emperor in your life and why is he Six of Cups in? Cups in. Why? What are you doing? What are you doing here? Like, again? <laughs> like, can we be real? Who is this? Or is this you? So this, this card is going to show up for everyone different. But what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling is... Are you being honest with yourself? Like that's that's the conversation. Like if we're best friends and we're sitting at a coffee shop right now, you're sitting across the table and I'm sitting over here with my Starbucks, mind you. And I'm being honest with you and I'm sitting across the table and I'm just like, are you being honest with yourself? Are you telling yourself the truth? When this uh, emperor comes up and the six of, pen six of cups comes up, how are you going to react? And is this person, are they being strong? Do they have integrity? What is their intention? Are they being, like, think about this. This is what's coming through. Ugh! When someone comes through and they're like, oh, you know, my intention is good. Is it? Is it? Because what integrity is, that word is really sticking out to me right now. Integrity. It's like my words match my intention and my 
action matches my words and therefore you can trust on me, you can count on me. If I say I'm gonna show up and I want to hang out with you or if I wanna do this and I don't show up, you have to question my integrity, no matter how pure my intention is because something is off. And when the emperor shows up here, all of his ducks are in a line. He, he shows up, and whether it's through thick or through thin, he will show up. If it's hard, if it's easy, he will show up. If he wants to be there, if he doesn't want to show, or if he doesn't, if he said he was gonna be there, he will be there. Are you gonna show up? If not, I have to call your integrity into action. Like I have to call it into, I have to call it, I have to call it out. That is my truth. And if the truth of me calling this out offends you, you, I need to question your place and your role in my life. Let that sit, let that sit. That's what I'm seeing for the start of this week. And this emperor, it could be a man, it could be a woman, it could be a father, it could be a boss, it could be your neighbor, it could be the guy who was on your roof this morning that you had to call the cops on. Is this a true story? Yes, yes, only in New Orleans. <laughs> Who is the emperor and why is he six of cupsing? Six of cups, for those of you guys that don't know, it's a, a revisit. It's a, I'm sorry, I wanna show up again. Why do you wanna show up? What is your intention? Because how it shows up sometimes is um, gentle. It's like the words, the words that we say. With the six of cups, we could see this card and we could be like, oh, this seems so light and so nurturing and so carefree and so honest. Yeah, it seems that way. But the thing is like our, when I teach tarot for my students in the Sacred Circle Tarot School, and for those of you guys that don't know about that, you can see the links down for, the, for down below. I have a school that I teach the tarot with. I teach that to my students in a way that is different than anywhere else because it's not just the meaning of the cards, it's what the cards are there for and how they're supposed to trigger your intuition and that's what we dive into. But the Six of Cups, yes, this card represents like returning back from the past and this gentleness, but intuitively, as I'm pulling this card and as I'm seeing this card, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling, when I'm looking at the charts, when I'm looking at the astrology, when I'm looking at the energy, is this is a person who comes back in or has the potential to come back in and they can say the right things, they can give a gift. What is the gift? It could be the gift of their words, the gift of my time, the gift of, oh, let's do this together, or oh, we could do this, or all of this is words, integrity integrity i need your words to match your intention to match your action and i need it to be consistent and if it is consistently something that i cannot count on then i need to be honest with myself and i need to call this role back into question again and be like what is your role in my life and do you have a space here there is a connection to divine timing here that you're gonna watch how this unfolds. And when I see timing, I'm seeing consistency. How has the emperor, whoever this person is, whatever this is, how have they consistently been for you? Are they going to change? What type of light do they bring into your life? Do they make you have good energy? Do they dim your energy? Is it something that you're seduced to? Is it something that you desire? Is it something that you need to explore a little further, a little deeper? And for the, some of you guys, this person is not a threat. For some of you guys, it's just like, well, I'm so happy that they're coming back into my life. And the truth is that they deserve to be there because their integrity, their intention is pure. But for other of you guys, it's really like, I need you to commit. Meaning like, I need you to be who it is that you say that you are and stay that person for me, for you, for us, for whatever it is that we're building here. And if that, if you can't do that, I need to be honest. And if my honesty offends you, second portion of this week is Wednesday through Friday. And what I'm seeing here is choice, a bond, a decision, What I see with this is spirit contact. I know that sounds crazy, but this is, and it's not like, you know, ghosts or, you know, the other side. It's our spirit, my spirit, your spirit. What does my spirit choose to do? What do I feel called to do? Why? Because again, the sun is moving through the sign of Leo. Leo is connected to the sun. The sun is connected to our heart. The heart is where we're pulled and we're we're being guided and what I'm seeing with this it's like where is your heart invested what has your heart chosen what do you choose 
if you're choosing two separate things and those two separate things are polar opposites, how can you maintain both things when both things don't work together? It's like trying to mix oil and water. They're so separate. So you trying to choose one or the other is creating chaos and confusion and conflict. You cannot merge these two separate things together because these two separate things don't belong. That's the reality. So when you try to balance them and juggle them, you are fucking it up for yourself, for me, for them, for us. That's what it is that I'm seeing. When you choose, you have to decide. And when this is, when I say choose, this is you guys stepping into your own integrity, into your own truth and saying, look, I am not, I don't need to be a part of this equation anymore. I cannot balance both of these things. I need you to step up as the emperor for yourself or for others. And you need to be strong and make a decision and say that, okay, me trying to balance both of these things is not working or it's not something that I should be doing. Something has to give and me putting down this thing, this like putting this ball down and just focusing on this ball does not mean that I'm weak and that I can't do it. It's not that you're weak, you just shouldn't be doing it. Focus your intention and give that thing your all because it is deserving of that. You give it a shot, you give it a chance, you give it a, a, you give it the, the will to survive by giving your focus on it, your energy on it. It's not possible to juggle everything all the time. Something has to give, and that's what it is that I'm seeing. You have to make a commitment. You have to make a decision. And when you do that, the hardships, that's the thing too. It's almost like the hardship. If you look at the friend that you're constantly kind of like not giving your energy to, like you always know they're going to be there. You always know they're going to be reliable. You always know they're going to be consistent. Instead of you taking advantage of that and instead of you not giving your all to it perhaps maybe give your everything to that friend because you know you can count on them and because you can actually build with them versus you juggling all this extra stuff and getting disappointed and on and and whoever else it is that you're choosing find the person that is there with you through th through thick and thin and has shown has shown you their integrity shown you their truth shown you their heart commit to them why wouldn't you and maybe this is a friend, maybe this is a business, maybe this is an idea, maybe this is a partner, whatever. But there is someone or something that has shown to you, that has proven to you, and for some reason, you still decide, you know, oh, they're always going to be there. No, time is ticking and that person's loyalty will run out. Oh, cool. <laughs> like, for real. You're being divinely guided now. Some people are going to take this message and run with it in a good way. And some people are going to take this message and run away from it in a bad way. And it is what it is. Like we all, again, that's a part of the decision that you make. But when you see people do that, and when you see them making the decisions, let them sit with their decision. Everyone needs to have the freedom to choose their own fate. And this week, the emphasis on freedom and flexibility and change is evident. It is very clear. So when people decide, I'm going to do this, let them go their own way. That is the fate that they've chosen for themselves. But it is your, it is your divinity. Like it's your divine choice to decide, okay, I'm either going to stay there available or I'm going to give myself my energy to something that is actually going to pay off and invest in me in the way that I deserve to be invested in. There is an infinite amount of resources and abundance that is here for you to tap into. But you can't do that if you are chasing after things that are not invested in you and your energy in the same way. And that is the truth, that is the reality. For some of you guys, you are making a commitment, a bond to something really significant and meaningful. And it could be a job, it could be a school, like making a choice um, when it comes to your future, when it comes to your relationships or whatever. And I support that and I love that. So I'm seeing you connect to that and going through it through thick and thin and choosing that through those hardships. And the hardships are gonna show you who and what is there for you and what is worth worth it for you because you would you would do it. It's like ride or die energy. Uh, Wednesday through Friday is where I'm really seeing an, a need for energy work. And this is active, this is very active. This is, I'm focusing my intention here because I want this space in my life to heal. I want this space in my life to be have a chance to have, you know, you know, a moment, a life. Now let's go ahead and talk about the end of this week, which is Friday through Sunday. Okay, so this message might be a little difficult for some, but for others, you're getting used to it. I'm seeing the Five of Cups and the Six of Swords. Now, 
I feel as though if you are doing energy work on yourself or if you're calling your angels and your guides to you know, provide energy work for you and healing for you throughout the course of this entire week, if you follow my advice, if you follow what is it I'm saying, and it's up to you if you decide to, I think that you will see that there are some situations and some circumstances that have lived their the completion of their life, they've lived out their life cycle, kind of like a mosquito, <laughs> they lived for as long as they can live, and then when it's time for them to go and to die, then it's time for them to go and to die. And it could be short-lived, it could be long, it could be annoying, it could be frustrating, it could be something that you keep hearing, hearing, like I don't know why the mosquito's coming through, but it's something that's pretty consistent and something that you've been hearing and knowing it's in your periphery, but you're trying to avoid it, it's time for you to leave this unhealthy situation. Now, this unhealthy situation or this unhealthy thing, it could be a pattern, it could be a lifestyle, it could be a belief, it could be a relationship, it could be an aspect of a relationship, it could be leaving social media, taking a break from it, moving forward. Either way, I'm seeing you hearing this annoying thing and you deciding, okay, it's time for me to zap this out of my life. It's time for me to move away from this. It doesn't have to be a permanent thing because a lot of things this week have a chance to be very temporary and you know you make a change you make a shift and it is what it is but it could be it could also be very permanent and it's up to you to decide it's up to you to decide but retrograde phases always have a way of kind of bringing things back up we're seeing this now that I've been saying with like Pluto retrograde and Saturn retrograde where you think you kind of leave something in the past like months ago and somehow it kind of surfaced up in another way shape or form so we kind of can see that I'm just being honest but I'm seeing that when you are quiet, when you are still, and you've connected with yourself, and you've connected with your energy, how does your energy feel around the situation? And you feel it, you see it, even your dreams are telling you. Something about your dreams when you're sleeping, when your mind is still, your dreams have come through and they're showing you. I had a dream last night, actually, that I was in this like tunnel, and I was blasting through it, or I had the option to blast through it, like the like a water slide. And the person that went before me got stuck in the tunnel, upside down, in this water tunnel. And there were people on deck that were there to help squeeze people through these tunnels, whether they fit or whether they didn't, and the water wasn't moving fast enough for them to go through it, so there's a chance that you would get stuck. And I could see this happening in my dream. Like I could see this happening that, okay, if I go in this slide, I could be stuck upside down and someone would have to squeeze me through and push me through. Why would I want to do that? In fact, the person that was before me got stuck as soon as he got in it and he had the rest of the journey to go. And I had to ask myself, wait, is this something that I want to do? And the answer was no. The answer was no. If I know and I can see that other people are getting stuck in these situations, why the hell would I get into that slide that water slide that is all dried up, face down or head down, <laughs> upside down, which is what this person did, which seems so stupid. And the answer is no. And that dream to me was so symbolic, which is like, okay, if I can see the outcome, why would I get into it? Why would I get involved? I'm not going to. That's the answer. So pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to your dreams and write them down at the time that you wake up because it, there's a lot that is happening here for you. And the other thing that I'm seeing is that it's almost like this offering, this sacrifice that, is, that we're being called to make this week where we say to ourselves, okay, I this circumstance, this opportunity, it's for me, but it's not mine to control, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to relinquish my need to control the outcome of this. I'm gonna give it to God, I'm gonna give it to the divine and show them what I need to see. And sometimes the best thing, the way that God speaks to us or the way the divine speaks to us or goddess speaks to us is through our dreams, through our dream work. And we can see, okay, you know what? I would have loved to go down that slide because this would have been a good time but I can see that other people are moving, like getting stuck in this, and for that, I'm gonna go to the next situation because I'm not gonna be a victim. Not today, Satan. Now, let's go through our supporting energies and let's go through what's working against us. Now, the first thing that's really working for us is our sense of independence. I am still getting a sense of miracles and miracle work. I am also getting a sense that every time around one o'clock we get a storm here in New Orleans. It is 1249 at the time of me filming this and it is almost one o'clock and the clouds are getting dark and a storm is coming and that is something that I'm consistently finding and I love that. <laughs> that is New Orleans truth and I respect that because it is consistent and I can plan accordingly to that. But back to what it was that I was saying. 
I'm seeing what's working for us is independence. Now, how can I look at these cards, the lovers and the two of wands and see independence when the lovers is sometimes about union. The lovers more than anything is ruled by the energy of Gemini and about choice and decisions. And this call, this call that we hear that comes from our heart, that comes from our path, our divine path and asks us to make a decision. We, that is what independence is. It's the freedom to make a choice, the freedom to make a decision that is there for your highest and greatest good. And that's what it is that I'm seeing. I'm seeing you kind of having the, the, the opportunity, the, the blessing in your hands, all of this potential that you have, that you have fostered, that you have grown, and you deciding independently, what am I going to choose to do with that? That is what is working for us this week, is stepping into that space of, okay, I am going to choose point blank. Like, I'm going to choose this because I am called to do that. That is where I'm getting my freedom from and I give myself the space, the freedom to spread my wings and to fly based upon what it is that I cho chose. Now, the reason why I'm able to spread my wings is because I am not being held back by things that have confined me or things that are taking up my space because I've clearly set the intention I've been working to clear them out. And because of that, I am so free right now. I'm free mentally. I'm free spiritually, I'm free physically, emotionally. I am now in a space where I can connect to this divine energy and then decide to invest my energy in it accordingly. For there, I, I just keep getting this message of miracle, miracle, a mir like a miracle. Expect the best, expect the best. This is not something that is just now, like here, it's something that I've said before and still keeps coming up is there's this miracle energy that's going on around us. It may not make sense as far as where it is that we're going, where it is that we've come from, but that's a part of the miracle is that a lot of times it never does make sense, but somehow it works its way out. Now what is working against us is some of us, some of us are our hearts. <laughs> Some, this, might, this message might resonate with others and other people be like, can't relate. And I feel like the people who can't relate are my Aquarius people or even maybe my Sagittarius where it's like, okay, I, I don't have any attachments regardless. Like a person who doesn't have attachments, this message can't, won't work with you. But you actually do have attachments, Aquarius and Sagittarius people, but your attachments just look a little different. Um, basically what it is that I'm seeing is it's what is that we've bonded ourselves to that is undying and relentless. It's being called into question. It's like a person who's committed themselves to something despite anything that could happen. And sometimes the best thing to happen is to distance yourself. We see this at the start of this week. And I'm seeing you being guided to focus on and put clarity on what is right and rightfully yours and being open to trans the transformative energy that is happening around all of us. This is the death card. And also the justice card is here. Now, as I'm looking at the justice card, it's been kind of lurking in my life for a lot and it's giving a lot of messages and a lot of you know, things that I wasn't expecting. In all my years of studying the tarot, I'm always learning, I'm always evolving, and that's something that I share with my students, again, in the Sacred Circle Tarot School. But with the Justice card, what I'm seeing here is, it's like a point in our lives where things are kind of outside of our control, but everything is being put on the table, and it's not for you to force the outcome, it's for you to not become a victim of it, but to wait your fate. And that's what I'm seeing here is that you have to allow, again, people and things and situations to choose their path. And everything kind of sorts itself out regardless of what you want it to be, regardless of what it is that you deserve. Even though justice will find fate or find justice, meaning like it will find what, if you deserve this punishment, then this is what you will get. But some punishments, you can't find them in that environment or some reward you won't find in that environment. You have to find it elsewhere. So the universe will find, will, will place you or God will place you in the place where you will receive the karma that you deserve, whether that be good or bad. For a lot of you guys, you are in a space right now where you are being placed in the environment where you deserve all of what it is that you've been putting out there. That is your karma. That is a part of your destiny. That is a part of your fate. 
So you can't fight that. And if you fight it, you're gonna create more pain and like tumultuous environment around you. So allow yourself to go where you're being called to now and don't question it and look at yourself and be like, well, why isn't this happening for me? It's not that it's not happening for you. It's that certain, cer certain circumstances have to be, you have to be in a new environment or a new circumstance, a new environment in order for you to receive the blessing that has been rightfully yours. And again, that is a part of the miracle. So be open to it. Wow, that was a whole lot, but I'm telling you guys, I'm actually proud of that because I was saying, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to give them all this information because there's a lot. I know in YouTube world, people don't want to hear people talking, but there's so much information. You guys know I'm a Virgo. I don't like giving you less than what is that you deserve. I want to give you all that you deserve and then some. So that's why these videos are long. I haven't heard anybody complaining about them. It's kind of like an insecurity that I have within myself. So I really wanna hear if you guys love this content, if you love how I feature this information, where it comes from, how it comes through, how it flows through me. The best way to do that is by leaving a comment down below. I have been reading all of them. I've been actually really good at responding to comments and reading them all. And another way is by sharing them. Is it one o'clock? Yes, it's 12.56 and on the dot it started raining. Wonderful. I am learning a lot about my environment, so that's good to know. But um, am I learning, oh yeah, the best way to, um, the, one of the ways that I like to be supported is by <clears throat> you guys sharing the videos, you leaving your comments, and also by you subscribing and turning on notifications. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, we're not gonna spam you. YouTube is not gonna spam you. I am not gonna spam you. I couldn't even if I wanted to, I don't want to. But if you wanna be notified when I make a video for the week ahead, then you can turn on the bell button and that's down in the comments below. I have actually am very proud of myself because I've been doing way better when it comes to getting these videos out for you timely. And the next video that I'm gonna be doing is gonna be breaking down what I see for the Leo new moon. I am going to work like one-on-one -on -one so hard with my guides. Like I'm really taking my time out for that because I feel like there's a message in there for me. And I would like to give that over to you guys as well. I'm considering doing a pick a card reading or a different thing, but we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you leave a comment down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.